Welcome to this Arnold Colourford Knitwear tutorial on the tubular cast on. One of the things that we love about knitting is that whether you've been knitting for five minutes, five years or even five decades, there's always something new to learn. Today I'm going to show you how to do a tubular cast on for one by one rib. It's the technique that's used in my nut hap design in the book of haps. So the tubular cast on for one by one rib looks like this. You can see that the stitches almost seem to appear from nowhere. They wrap round to the other side. And you can also use it for two by two rib as demonstrated on this porky mitt by uh, Kate Davis. And again, the stitches just wrap round from one side to the other without any obvious start or finish. So this technique is very straightforward. It's carried out in four steps. The first step is to cast on with a waste yarn and you cast on half the number of stitches that you need. So if you need 20 stitches, you cast on 10. If you need 19 stitches, you divide it in half and you round up. So for 19 stitches, you would cast on 10 as well. And that's what we've done here. So we've cast on with a waste yarn. I like to use a smooth uh, cotton four ply because it doesn't um, stick to the other fibers. And I've cast on 10 stitches and I've worked a knit row and a purl row. I've then swapped over to my main yarn here, which is the Rowan felted tweed that's used in the nut hap design and I've worked a further three rows in stocking stitch. So there's a knit, a purl, and a final knit row. So the first two steps are to cast on and work two rows in waste yarn, and then the second step is to work with your main yarn for three rows. And all the time, this is just half your number of stitches. If we then look at the rear of the work, you should be able to see the row where the waist yarn and main yarn meet. And along the bottom, we've got the loops of main yarn. And what we're going to do is we're going to take a spare needle and we're going to pick up these loops of main yarn on the bottom here. So we want our needle tips eventually to be pointing in the same direction. So I'm going to start at this end, moving the end of the yarn out of the way, and I'm going to pick up the loop where it meets the waist yarn. So there's the first two, three. If you find it easier, you can use a smaller needle to do this step. Sometimes it's a bit easier to get the smaller needle into the stitches as you go along the row. There's the last but one and the final one. And you'll notice that you always have one less loop than you had stitches cast on. So here we had 10 cast on stitches and we should now have nine loops of main yarn picked up and that's perfect. What you do next is to remove the waste yarn. And here's the end of the row where it was worked and I'm just going to use the other free needle tip literally just to pull out that waste yarn where it meets the main yarn stitches. If you're doing a long cast on edge like in the nut tab, you'll find it easier if you trim the waste yarn end every so often so that you're not having to pull too much through each stitch. Okay, you continue to do that. You can see the waste yarns being removed and you're left with just the main yarn on your needles. We've removed the waste yarn and we now have a very small section of stocking stitch on our two needles. The cast on stitches are on the straight needle and the working stitches we had before are on the circular needle. You can see on this side the purl bumps, so this is the wrong side of the fabric. And on the other side is the smooth right side of the fabric. 
and we want to fold it so that the right side is outermost, which is slightly tricky when it's so small. <laughs> so with the circular needle behind, we're going to purl from the back needle. Get the yarn on the right side. We're going to purl from the back needle. And then we're going to knit from the front needle. If you find like I just have that your stitches are the wrong way round on your needles, then just work through the back of them. So my knit stitches aren't sitting the right way round on my needle, so I'm just going to work through the back of them. And then you just continue to alternate. So you purl from the back needle and then you knit from the front needle. Carefully moving your stitches up so that you don't drop any. Purling from the back needle. And then knitting from the front needle. And as you work along, you'll see that that folds that slim stocking stitch edge so that it wraps around one side creating the purl stitches and the other side creating the knit stitches. So just a recap. Our steps were to cast on with waste yarn and work two rows. I find that's easier because you have a little bit more to see what's going on. You then change to your main yarn and work three rows, starting and ending with a right side row, a knit row. You then pick up your main yarn stitches where they meet the waste yarn and remove the waste yarn edge and you then carry out a joining row where you work alternately from the front needle, which gives you the knit stitches, and the back needle, which gives you the purl stitches. Last ones. Always have to be really careful with the last ones because they can be a bit frisky and want to drop off. And the very final one. And we now have our tubular cast on edge with the stitches wrapping round from one side to the other. If you wanted an even number of stitches, you would then simply work an increase in the first stitch of the next row but I wanted an odd number of stitches, so I'm all set to go. And I'm ready to work now a right side row with rib all the way across, starting with a knit, knit purl, knit purl, all the way across. And once you've done that for a few rows, you'll have a beautiful tubular cast on edge. I do hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. Please do look out for our other videos on our YouTube channel. And why not try something new today?